Hi, my name is Kenneth Paul, and this is my woodworking shop. It's a genuine pleasure to have you here. Each week, I try to produce a video showcasing either a project or a technique from here in the shop. And this week's project is a piece of kinetic sculpture designed by Derek Hugger, and it's called Sahid, C-E-P-H-E-I-D, if you want to look up the plants. All right, I've already started cutting up some of the pieces, so let me show you where we stand right now, and I'll take you through the build process. And as always, if you like the content I'm producing here, uh, do me a favor and hit subscribe, hit like, it helps. All right, let's get to it. All right, what we have here is my Hegner scroll saw. This is what I've been cutting all the pieces out with. I've been using a uh, Pegasus number seven, uh, sorry, yeah, number seven skip tooth blades. I think I went through about half a dozen of them or so. And what we have on the floor here, these are all the cutoff pieces. And all that waste was to produce these. These are the pieces that will make up the piece of kinetic sculpture. You can see I've already stained four of them. I still got to pull the patterns off of some. A quick word on adhering patterns. I print my patterns on normal printing paper and then I glue them onto the wood using 3M's Super 77. And then in order to take off the paper afterwards, I don't sand it off or anything. All I do, like you can see on this piece, I've already dampened it with a little bit of mineral spirits. You dampen it for a few moments with a damp rag and that paper lifts right off. The uh, mineral spirits dissolves the Super 77, softens it right up and you can lift your patterns right off without any sanding any problems. And you just take your damp rag with a little bit of mineral spirits, wipe any remaining glue off the wood and you're good to go. It's easy as that. That's the best system I have found for attaching and then removing patterns onto wood. Okay, what I'm using here is 1 8 inch, 1 quarter inch, and half inch Baltic birch plywood. I'm using the Baltic birch plywood because the uh, Baltic birch plywood, apple ply, uh, a lot of the marine plywoods and finished plies and the Russian plies are very void free. Uh, they're dimensionally stable, there's a lot of layers in them, and they're really easy to get accurate sawing out of. Because if you're going to cut these gears, it does require accurate cutting. Although I have to say that on this particular project, you're going to drill over a hundred holes. And all the holes need to be drilled before you start cutting the shapes up. Once you put the pattern down, before you start cutting, do all your drilling. This particular project is as much about precision drilling as it is about precision cutting. All right. Well, let's get on to the next step then. Okay, here you can see I've started to assemble some of the pieces. I put a finish on all the pieces. Some of them, the red ones, have a rosewood czar stain on them. And then I put a couple of coats of spray lacquer and then just a coat of wax. You can see the Paul assembly. Here's one of them here with its quarter inch rare earth magnet and its little one eighth inch rare earth magnet and its brass sleeve where it pivots. You can see one already mounted up here. You can see what the one eighth inch rare earth magnets do. It won't let it stay against the post. It'll keep forcing it against the gear. 
Here's one of the gear assemblies. Bearings are installed. I've got the two spools for the clock spring and the clock spring has been installed. That will eventually go down right here. Oops. There we go. And you can see here that when that spins, that magnet will just keep forcing that tooth against the gear. All these pieces will assemble on this piece mounted to the wall and then this stainless steel rod is what all these pieces will get mounted onto with brass spacers. This one has already been assembled. You can see the weights, the balance weights that have been added. Bearing, more balance weights. These two will assemble and this will mount from the other side. It will be screwed through all these recessed holes. This will be the final cover. Actually, like, oh, from the other side. That's why it doesn't work. All right. All right. So at this point, I am ready to start my final assembly and the next time you see it, it will be assembled and hopefully working. <laughs> Alright, see you then. Alright, and here we have the completed sculpture. And like I say, as the magnetic poles rotate over each other, the direction changes. There you go. And it just keeps creating designs. Oops, hang on, I forgot to put the cover on. One moment. Just put a stop to this. Stop, stop. Oops. <laughs> All right. There. Now the cover's in place, so that's better. And you can see the cams as they come around. And the sculpture is complete. And again, the plans for this are available on uh, Derek Hugger's website. I suggest you look at his website just to check out his uh, sculpture called Calibri, the uh, kinetic hummingbird. But again, my name is Kenneth Paul, and this is from my wood shop. And if you like the work I do, Please feel free to uh, hit subscribe, hit like, and like I said, every week I try to bring out another video of a project from the woodshop. Alright, now you have a good day. Bye-bye.